Hi everyone, my name is Maggie Connolly and I'm the planetarium specialist here at Roper Mountain and I am coming to you live from our observatory. And you may be asking yourself, well, what is an observatory? That is an excellent question. An observatory is a building that normally has like a dome shape and inside is a telescope and we can use that telescope to look at things in the sky. So we're gonna do a quick view of our telescope and this telescope is what we call a refractor. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. But what's really cool is that this is the eighth largest in North America. So I'm super excited to be coming to you live from here. We are going to talk about telescopes and how they work and all that. But before we do that, we're going to talk about something that happened a long time ago. So back in the 1600s, many, many, many years ago, there was an astronomer named Galileo. And one night he's out and he's looking through his telescope and he's drawing his observations. They didn't have cameras back then. And that was fine. But then he goes out in the following nights and he noticed that things looked a little bit different and it was not what he expected. So I'm gonna show you Galileo's drawings. And if you take a look, like that first line is one night of observing and then the second line is a, second, is a different night and then the third line is a different night. So what I want to know from you is what do you think Galileo was observing? Do you think he was looking at planets, stars, moons, galaxies, the sun? So take a couple seconds and make a prediction. All right, do we all have it? All right, so Galileo was actually observing Jupiter and some of its moons. And I'm going to show you a picture of Jupiter taken from our telescope here at Roper Mountain. So if you look really closely, you'll be able to see some of those bands that go across the planet. That's part of the weather system, so that's kind of cool. Uh, but in Galileo's drawings, we saw some moons, right? In order to see the moons of Jupiter, we need to make the planet super, super bright. And when we do that, you can see those four yellow dots are four of Jupiter's moons called the Galilean moons because Galileo discovered them. They're also uh, Jupiter's four largest moons. So we're gonna come back at the end and talk about why that was a really important observation to make. As we're going through our program, maybe you can make some predictions and think about why you think that would have been important in the 1600s. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. We're gonna talk about light. So light travels in a straight line, and when it hits an object, it can do one of three things. It can be reflected, refracted, or absorbed. And we are going to talk about reflection and refraction with our telescope. Let's start with reflection, which you all have already seen. I bet you have all seen your reflection in a mirror. So how does that happen? Well, if my hand is a mirror and I'm looking at it, the light's going to travel straight and then when it hits the mirror, it is basically just going to bounce back. It's going to be reflected back to my eyes and I see my reflection. So with a reflector telescope, it's going to have mirrors. This is one right here. I'm going to kind of move this a little bit. and You can see if you're, if you're looking inside here, you can kind of see that. So there is a mirror in the back. What happens is that the light comes through the telescope. It's going to travel all the way back to that mirror and be reflected back. On its way back, it's actually going to run into a second mirror that's right in here, this middle part. That mirror is going to send the light in that direction. And then you look through this eyepiece and you see what the telescope sees. So with a reflector, they use mirrors. A refractor telescope is not going to use a mirror. It's going to use lenses. And I have one right here that's been cut open. But before we get to that, let's talk about refraction. Because I bet you have all seen refraction, even if you didn't know it. If you've ever had a cup of liquid, maybe, um, maybe some water, right, and you have a straw in it, if you look at the part of the straw that's in the liquid and then the part that's not in the liquid, it almost looks like there's two, two different straws, right? That's because the light is being refracted. It is being bent. So with a refractor telescope, we have one lens on this side. This is called the objective lens. The light's going to come in through here, it's going to be refracted, and it's going to travel all the way down to the other end, where there is a second lens. That lens will focus the light, and then we look through this eyepiece, and we see what the telescope sees. 
So that's how a refractor telescope works, and our big telescope here is a refractor. So let's take a look at that. A, the, if you look at the way other end, kind of where that black tarp is, that is where that first lens will be, that objective lens. And the light's gonna travel all the way down until it gets to another lens that's over here on this side right where the eyepiece is. It's going to focus the light. We look through the eyepiece, we see what the telescope sees. But you guys aren't here to look through our eyepiece. So what I have instead is a camera, and I can show you what that camera sees, and we can see that live view from the telescope. In order to do that, I do have to open up our observatory. And while I do that, I'm gonna ask you your next question. And this is a true or false question. So true or false, there are no stars that we can see in the daytime sky. So think about your answer. While you're doing that, we're gonna get this open. All right, so true or false, no, there are no stars that we can see in our daytime sky. All right. All right, so now that we have gotten our observatory open, let's take a look at the software that we use to, uh, to control our telescope. And we'll get to that answer in just a minute. I hope, you ch I hope you have made your choice about true or false. So this software right here, this tells us what's in the sky and we can point our telescope to it and tell it to go there. Right now, we have our telescope on the sun. And just like how you don't want to look at the sun with just your eyes, you want to make sure you have protection. Same thing with our telescope. We have a special filter, and that is going to allow us to safely view the sun. So let's pull that up. Oh, no. All right, so we need to open it up just a little bit more, and that's okay. You'll be able to see it happen. It's kind of cool. Ready? Look at that. There's our sun. <laughs> All right, and again, this is a live view. This is happening in Greenville, South Carolina right now. We're recording this on November 18th. So this is our sun. Let's talk about some sun facts. Uh, so the sun is pretty big. About a million Earths can fit inside of it. It is pretty hot. In the middle, at its core, it's about 27 million degrees. And then on the edge, it's about 10,000. The sun is far away. It's 93 million miles away. It is made up of mostly hydrogen and helium gases, and it takes about eight minutes from the light from the sun to reach us. And my last sun fact will answer that question that I asked you. So remember, that question was true or false. There are no stars we can see in the daytime sky. If you said false, you are correct because the sun is a star. And when it's not cloudy out, if you're wearing eye protection, you can go out and you can look at the sun. So why don't we take a, a quick look at some of the other photos or pictures that we've taken with our telescope. So we're gonna start with the moon. And you can see there are a lot of craters in this photo. So um, where we have um, like, like a rock that's hurling through outer space, hits the surface of the moon, and causes those little circle shapes. So those are craters. Our next view uh, will show a few craters, but we also see um, a mountain range. And then right below that mountain range, there's like a dark, really smooth area. That's what we call Maria. Maria is dried up lava. Uh, our next object that we're going to look at, ooh, do you guys know what we're looking at now? What is this? This is your next question. What object are we looking at now? If you said Saturn, you are correct. Um, we can see Saturn's rings really well in our picture. And the reason that we can see those rings so well is because they're made out of like rocks and dust, but also ice. And the ice reflects the light super well for us to be able to see those rings. Now, just like Jupiter, Saturn has a lot of moons. So if we make Saturn really bright again, then we can see some of those moons pop up. So those yellow dots are some of, of Saturn's moons. Our next object is another planet. This one is Mars. 
Mars is kind of a reddish looking planet, right? It's red because of that iron oxide or rust. And at the beginning, I showed you the sun, and I said that was a star. We can look at other stars. Our next star, uh, this one is called Albireo, and it's what we call a double star. That means that when we look at it from Earth, it looks like it's just one star. But when you look at it through a telescope, you can see that it's two. And if you look carefully, you'll see that that bottom star looks kind of blue, and then the top star looks kind of yellow. <laughs> That's because they're different temperatures, which makes them different colors. We have also seen groups of stars that we call clusters. This one is called the Hercules Cluster because we can find it in the constellation Hercules. And we've seen one of my favorites, which is a nebula. And a nebula is, is either where stars are forming, so it's a star nursery, or it's left over from where a star has died. This one is left over from where a star has died, but you can see those amazing colors, so that blue, and then there's kind of like that purplish color on the outside. Um, I also like that this one is called a ring nebula because it looks kind of like a ring, right? So these are just some of the things that we've seen with our telescope. Uh, we are going to move forward, but in order to do that, we're gonna have to close up our observatory a little bit because it's super bright. So I'm going to do this. We're gonna close that one. And then, there we go. There we go. So we're just going to let this thing close up a little bit so it's not quite so bright when I'm uh, chatting with you for the rest of our program. Hmm. All right, let's see. That should hopefully be good. Let's see. A little bright, but not too bad. <laughs> All right, so now that we've taken a look at some of the things we've seen with our telescope, let's revisit that picture, that um, drawing by Galileo. So um, remember that each line represents a different night of, uh, of observing. In that first night that, that Galileo was observing Jupiter, he drew that circle for Jupiter, and he thought that those bright objects were stars. That's why he drew them in that star shape that we know. And then as he kept observing the planet, he realized that those star shapes were moving. And even then they knew that stars don't really move. Um, so Galileo was able to determine that those weren't stars of Jupiter, they were moons. And the reason that this is really important is because back in the 1600s, a lot of people still thought that the Earth was the center of the solar system. And one of the arguments for this was, well, if the Earth moved, wouldn't it leave the moon behind? So uh, Galileo was able to show with his drawings that Jupiter's moons could move around the planet and move with the planet. And if Jupiter could do it, then why couldn't the Earth? And while this isn't the final observation that really changed people's minds and made them realize that the sun is the center of our solar system, it was one of many that were done using telescopes. And what else have telescopes helped us learn over the years? Well, they've helped us learn about moons, our moon, right? So we, the features of our moon, we looked at craters and mountain ranges and maria. They've helped us learn about the features and the geography and weather on other planets. Um, remember when I showed you Jupiter and I said that those bands were part of the weather system? We know that because of telescopes. Telescopes have helped us understand light and gravity and how the solar system was formed, how planets are formed, how moons are formed. And they are going to help us answer a question that we've been asking for a long time, which is, are we alone in the universe? Are there other life beings? Are there aliens out there? We don't know, but telescopes are going to help us answer that question. So I hope you have enjoyed our Live from the Observatory program, All About Light and Telescopes, and we hope to see you again soon.